Welcome to this video where I'm going to explain how to save data using a button. Let's say if you have a high score of 10, you want to save that high score so that when you start your next game, bam, that 10 is still there. Now let's get started. To start off, I'm going to briefly describe what my example is going to be for this video. So I plan to basically just save the high score of a player so that the next time you play the game, you still retain that same high score. Now, to do that, I'm just going to display the score using this text game object. So I created a canvas, right click, UI, canvas. Then as a child of that, I created a text and I will modify what it says. So it'll say high score colon and then the number your high score is. Now, when you create a canvas, you'll need to do this for the button or you, it, the button. When you create one, it will automatically create a canvas with it. Make sure that an event system is also created with it. If not, you can still right click UI event system. Now we can create the button, which we are going to be use. Right now we have our button. Next, we're going to need to create two scripts. First of which I call manager, the second one I call save. You can create scripts by right clicking, create C sharp script. I have mine right here. Alrighty, so at the top, there are a bunch of libraries you have to import. Now I have this UI library, again, that is for the sake of our example. If you also need that, then definitely do include it. I need the UI because I'm going to be modifying a text. Now at this top, I also have this public integer high score, and that's going to be the value of high score we're going to be changing. So let's say this round, if my player gets a new high score, I'm going to be modifying this and then saving it somewhere else. So if there are a couple things you want to say, let's say you also want to save the number of lives your player has, the number of coins your player has, this is going to be the place to create those attributes. Now, our second script is going to be really simple. Make sure it looks just like this. It needs to be serializable and make sure there it doesn't it doesn't say the mono behavior just like this one did make sure to take that out now this is going to be what is stored essentially so this is going to be think of this as the storage and then think about when we everything we're doing over here we're modifying it and then we have to modify this one like this is the final score that when you start the new game you're going to be taking whatever is saved here now what we're doing is we're going to obviously start our high score at zero and throughout this process, we're going to be changing that zero value to what we want to save it as. Now, when we start the game, it's first going to call this method load game. Load game just checks if you already have a high score saved. So let's say you played the game, your high score is 10. Next time you play a game, you obviously want your 10 back. So what it's going to do, it's going to deserialize this file. It's going to get whatever this high score is, and it's going to set it to the high score in the game. So in the game, if you want to modify the high score, you're modifying this high score. That's why in our update, I'm using this high score to display the score. Now, our save game is going to do the opposite. Instead of decoding it, it's going to encode whatever we want to save and essentially send it back over. Now, it does this by using this, this method, create save. Now, this save this create save is going to create a save object, right? And this save object is going to be using our attributes, right? So save, we're changing save that high score, which is this, we're setting this equal to the one up here, right? So if you get, again, if you have coins, you might have to do save dot coins. Again, if you, you might have to create public in coins, let's say, and then change that over here. So make sure if you're creating multiple variables that you have them here, you have them here, and you have them here. One quick important thing is that here, when it looks for this path, you have to be careful that if, let's say you, you have another project, right? Let's say you have a second game or whatever, you need to make sure to change this path because this is essentially looking for a specific file so if you have a same file name you're going to run into some issues so let's say you create a second game right a completely different unity project make sure to change all of these to game two or just something else to differentiate it or else you're going to run into issues with this serializing and you might get an error 
Now this last method is going to be the one we call when our button is clicked. When our button is clicked, we're just gonna tell the game to save. Now make sure to save this script, make sure to save your other script. Now, we have to add the scripts to our button. Now this save script does not need to be attached to anything because it's not assigned to a specific game object. It's kind of just always there, but our manager script does have to go somewhere. So I'm gonna just put this on our button. You just need to make sure that it's gonna be in the scene because if this, for example, if you change scenes and nothing has this manager game object, that's gonna be a problem. Our high score, that's what we're gonna modify later. And then to display our score, we're gonna do this. Drag our button. Now we have to go down. We're gonna tell the button what to do on click. We're gonna find our the object in which our script is attached to. We just attach it to the button. Button, our manager script, and our button saving method. All right, now let's click play. As you can see, our high score automatically set to zero. Then let's say you play your game, you play your game, you get a high score of five, let's say. Now we're gonna click save and that has finally saved it. So before I click this button, in the moment, in this scene, it was currently five, but if I'd gone out of it, it wouldn't have saved. But now because we clicked our save button, when we play, the score is automatically set to five. Just to show you, if I didn't click the button, let's say we got a score of 10. Uh-oh, we didn't click our save button, but we ended. That When we start again, that same 5 is still going to be there. Versus, again, if we get, say, another high score of 10, we click our save button, we end our game, we play our game again, and then our 10 is back. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this saving method has been very helpful and you can implement it into your own project.